Hey YouTube, today is the launch of the AMD Threadripper 9000 series CPUs. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing and overview of the Threadripper 9000 series to show what you guys get in the box if you're looking to build a prosumer quote unquote high end desktop. So this one features the new Zen 5 architecture on the STR5 socket. So this is the exact same socket that the 7000 series Threadrippers from two years ago uh, work on. So if you're somebody who already has a 7000 series CPU and you're looking to upgrade to Zen 5 because you want either the full fat AVX 512, which this features, or you just want to be on the latest and greatest because you're a true enthusiast and you have a pretty high budget for your workstation or your high-end desktop, I think this is a pretty good choice. What we're going to be looking at in the next couple of videos is going to be the 24 core because a lot of the reviewers were not sampled a 24 core. So this is a re retail unit I picked up today from Micro Center. So this is a 24 core 9960X. So this is going to be the entry level point for the HEDT platform if anyone is looking to get into that platform. So in terms of the platform, what do you get compared to Threadripper Pro? and compared to the standard Ryzen CPUs. Well, you get 80 PCIe 5.0 lanes. This is a massive improvement over the 7000 series Threadripper, which had 40, I think it was 48 PCIe 5.0 lanes. So there is a bump in PCIe bandwidth going to the 9000 series CPU. However, you're probably going to be limited more on the motherboard selection. So you're definitely going to want to choose a motherboard that has the highest amount of connectivity depending on your use case. You also get quad channel DDR5 RDIM memory support. So for those that are not familiar with what that means, that means that you have four independent memory channels versus two memory channels or dual channel that you would find on a standard Ryzen based system or an Intel core based system. Those only have dual channel, whereas this is quad channel. If you step up to the Threadripper Pro, you get octa channel or eight channel memory. So on the back of it, you do see the actual Threadripper CPU. There we go. There is the Ryzen Threadripper 9960X. Let's go ahead and open the box here. These do not have integrated graphics. But anyone looking to build a high-end desktop knows that you're going to be running a discrete graphics card or more than one graphics card because of all the PCIe lanes. So that is the processor itself. That is a very large chip. And then on the back, this is a very nice thick foam. You can see here that comes out of the box and everything's kind of all enclosed in here. So inside the box, you do get an Asetek mounting bracket for a 360 AIO. So you can retrofit this to an existing Asetek cooler, liquid cooler, and this works with all of the STR5 or the T TRX50 motherboards. So that is included, that's always been included. Then you also get the torque screwdriver. So a lot of people have been asking me, well, um, how do you use this thing? Well, the way this works is this is, this is built for the torque, the rotational force required to secure the Threadripper in the socket retention frame. So what that means is when you tighten the screw, this will automatically, like you tighten it until it can't go anymore. As soon as it hits the lock point, if you try to t over tighten it, this orange part will actually turn and click and it will not let you turn anymore. Meaning you can't over tighten the screws, which is actually a really good design from a reliability standpoint, usability standpoint. So I, it's nice that they include the torque screwdriver in the box. So make sure you hold on to this as well as that Asetek. So then the rest of it, you get this with all of your AMD processors. So you get the installation instructions and warranty information, certificate of authenticity. So in here, it just gives you some documentation on, you know, how to, install the CPU. So this is, there's two different ones here. This is SP5, they've got SP5 instructions and then they have the STR5 instructions. I'm not sure exactly why there's two different ones. They both use a T20 torque driver. This is a T20 torque driver, just for reference. So if you ever lose this, 
know that you need a T20 torque driver to install one of these in the socket. So that's the CPU itself. It does come in this orange carrier frame. You do not want to remove the CPU from the carrier frame. You just keep it in the carrier frame because you're going to use this in the installation process. And then there is this AMD sticker here that kind of indicates what is in the box, torque wrench and liquid cooler bracket. And then lastly, you get an AMD Threadripper case sticker badge there. And that's pretty much everything that is in the box. Okay, to install the Threadripper CPU, we'll note that the motherboard is in the case like this. The CPU will be facing upside down when it is installed in the socket. That's just how it is. So we're going to use the torque screwdriver that's included to open the socket. And the instructions for opening it are the reverse order of closing it. So you see there's three torque screws. There's one here and then two down here. So to open it, it says on the socket, three, two, one. So we'll open this one first, then two, then one. And then close is one, two, and three. So we're gonna start with three. I'm gonna open it like that. Two. And one. It is spring loaded. So as soon as you fully unlock it, it will lift up on its own. It has a spring mount like this. So it will open like that. And then you have the actual socket retaining clip here. There's two blue clips you pull on that to lift up. It also has a spring. And then the socket with the pins, there are a lot of pins down there. There's like over 4,000 pins. So that has its own cover there. You're not going to remove that until you're ready to put the CPU on. So to install the CPU, we need to remove this plastic carrier frame first. So once that's out of the way, now that exposes the inner frame and then the outer bracket is over there. So to install a CPU, we're going to remove it from its plastic housing. And you're going to want to keep it in the orange carrier frame. You do not remove it from this. It says do not remove right there. So we're going to put line this up in the rails like so and then it will click in so you just give it a little nudge and it will line up with the socket so now we need to remove now comes the really delicate part so now we need to remove from the two sides they remove you just grip and pull up on it that reveals the actual socket and then we're going to put this cpu over it using the blue tabs to click it down and then we're going to overlay the actual frame the ilm frame and to close it's going to be the reverse order so one and i want to get them to catch a little bit so then two and then three and now that i have all three of them like on threads now we're going to tighten it all the way until we hear the click sound. So we're gonna keep turning on one until I hear the click on this torque screwdriver. There's the click, so I cannot go any further, so that's done. Now two. There's the click, that's done, and then finally three. All right, so one, two, three, the CPU is now installed in the STR5 socket. Now we need to apply the thermal paste and then install the cooler. Okay, the way you can apply the thermal paste, there are multiple different ways. Uh, I like to do the X pattern myself because I know that the CCDs are in the four corners and the IO die is in the middle. So I tend to do it like this. And put a little bit more over here. You can put two dots if you want, or you could do this and that. All right, so that's good. 
because it will spread out. So I do the X pattern and then some dots, but whatever works because the CCDs are, so the IO die is in the middle and then you've got the actual cores are on the left and the right of it, depending on the CPU. So this is a 24 core. So the heat density is gonna be a little bit more confined versus a 64 core, 32 core. So we don't really need to worry too much about it. But that's how I apply mine. And then we're going to mount the cooler and then we're gonna boot up. The memory training is gonna take a while, you know, like five minutes or so for the first boot. But then after that, it'll be more like a normal desktop. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so after the initial boot, which takes about five minutes, and then you have to reset the FTPM, and then it'll finally get to this screen. So we're going to want to go into the BIOS to load stuff like XMP or Expo in this case. So we can see here we have a 9960X24 core, CPU speed 5.4 gigahertz, and we are on the latest BIOS from ASUS. So to go in here, we want to go to the AI tuner and set Expo. So our RAM will run at 6400 DDR5. And that's pretty much all you need to do if you just want to set it and forget it. The other thing, because I am running USB 4, I am running the USB 4 card in here, I do need to go to AMD PBS and enable my USB 4 card. So that is one thing that I need to do. Specifically, we've covered that, how to add USB 4 slash Thunderbolt 4 to Threadripper last year. So you can check out that video in the card up above. So that's gonna be it for the setup. We're gonna F10 and then boot into Windows and verify everything is there. Okay, so I've been doing some a little bit of uh, testing just to verify everything is good here after installing the CPU. So you can see my temperatures at idle are good. We're idling in the upper 30s. We are using a Noctua air cooler. So we're not using a liquid cooler. And when we do run Cinebench, we do get up into the upper 80s. You guys can see here, the higher temperatures were like 88 degrees on the CPU average um, under full load. But the performance uplift over the previous Zen 4 Threadripper is pretty significant, I would say. Uh, you can see here in R23, I scored over 60,000. Keep in mind, this is pure stock. We have not messed with PBO at all. This is literally stock on a Noctua air cooler. But what's vastly improved is the single thread performance. We're now scoring very similar to the 9950X. We're getting that 2,150 points on single thread. So that brings us up to the Zen 5 single thread expectation. And then over 60K, the, for reference, the 7960X from two years ago scores about 49 to 50,000 in R23. So we're seeing anywhere from like 10 to 11,000, maybe even 12,000 points, depending on run variance in terms of the performance uplift on multi-thread. And then the single thread is about 200 to 300 points faster than Zen 4's Threadripper. And I did like a side-by-side. -side. Also in CPU Z, you can see a noticeable uplift in single thread performance. We're doing 845.9 on the single thread versus 718.6 on the previous 7960X. So both of these are 24 core Threadrippers. These are the entry level Threadrippers. They're both like $1,500 CPUs. So if you are trying to get into the platform just because you need PCIe lanes, I do think that the 24 core is definitely worth considering. It's going to give you the best single thread performance, which means if you're, you don't need a lot of cores, but you want the PCIe lanes and you also want to play games on this platform in your free time, this is going to give you the best gaming experience that you're going to get on Threadripper if you're on Windows because the 24 core 48 thread is not overwhelming to Windows in terms of the, uh, the scheduler. It's not like the 32 core and the 64 core, which sometimes Windows, depending on what you're doing, Windows will not know what how to leverage the extra cores. The other thing I noticed, the first CCD is the highest performing CCD on this processor. You can see CCD zero, there are four CCDs, and the first one here, all six of these cores, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, all six of these cores can do 5.4 gigahertz 
whereas the rest of all the other cores on the other three CCDs all only do up to 5 gigahertz. So this is giving you that highest turbo core boost or whatever you want to call it with the default behavior here. So if you are looking to overclock this, you probably want to play around with per core or per CCD settings in the BIOS for Curve Optimizer, for example. We will probably take a look at that. I don't know if Curve Shaper is available on Threadripper, but it was available when Zen 5 launched last year. So I would assume maybe it'll be available, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not, just because Threadripper is not, tr not really meant for overclocking. This is meant for, you know, a reliable, static, high-end desktop workstation type use case so it's not something that i would expect but if it does have curve shaper you can play around with that to possibly get better performance i think with pbo the name of the game is probably going to be plus 200 megahertz and then try to do like a negative five offset or something and try to divert more power to the first ccd if you are trying to increase the single thread performance we may do a video about that in the future uh, but so far the stock performance of this is significantly better than my overclocked 7960x so I'm pretty impressed with this so far, and I do think that the 24 core 48 thread is a good balance of entry level HEDT while also providing you access to the platform's 80 plus lanes of PCIe Gen 5. So I kind of think this is the good one. So we have the 128 gigs of RAM running at 6400, so single, single uh, DIM per channel, so one DPC, four memory sticks. So we've covered that in the past. And overall, it's a great platform. You guys can see lots of storage capacity, lots of compute. We're running dual graphics cards. We can even run, you know, triple or, or quad graphics cards if needed. But that is going to be it for the overview of the 9960X. We'll be doing a couple of more videos on the channel covering this in depth. We're probably going to be doing some live streams featuring this processor for those that are curious. So tune into those, hit the bell icon, get subscribed if you want to ask questions while I'm live, if you're considering building a high-end desktop. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, guys, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks.